Hello, my name is Delia Scott. I'm an Agriculture Extension Associate in the Department of Horticulture at the University of Kentucky. And I am in the horticulture research farm, Apple Orchard, which is about 25 years old. Behind me, you can see the apple orchard is in full bloom. Some trees have also leafed out. The video you're about to watch demonstrates how to prune an older central leader apple tree. And this is demonstrated by Extension Professor Emeritus Dr. John Strang, who's a retired fruit and vegetable specialist in the Department of Horticulture at the University of Kentucky. He'll be showing us how to prune during the dormant season. This is a 30 year old gold rush tree on a mauling seven rootstock. Uh, you can see this tree has gotten pretty big in 30 years and we've got a lot of kind of rough looking wood. You know, we figure 30 years is kind of the life of a tree. This type of central leader tree has a minimum of vertical structural wood and it's got a lot of uh, wood that's laid out, not quite horizontally, but uh, for producing fruit. Uh, this tree works because it's pyramidal shape. It's shaped just like a Christmas tree and we've got quite a distance between our scaffold limbs here. And the idea is that the sunlight comes in from the side and can get all the way up to the trunk and color up the fruit and get sunlight into the leaves to produce carbohydrates and sugars for the fruit. We're gonna start out pruning a scaffold limb right here. Uh, this scaffold limb has a nice angle on it. We wanna keep the tip of this limb, the highest part on that limb to discourage what we call water sprout uh, production back in the limb on the limb. Uh, in the top of the tree up there, we need to keep the terminal the tallest spot on the tree. So there are basically two types of cuts that we'll use on fruit trees. One is called a heading back cut. And if we cut the tip off of a shoot like that, that terminal bud gives off an auxin that inhibits these lateral buds along here from breaking and growing. Once we cut that off, these buds are released and they will branch. We'll get these buds to break, oh, usually uh, three to eight inches below where we make that cut. That's the type of cut we tend to use on younger trees. We don't like to use that on older trees because it makes them real bushy and makes more pruning for us. The other type of cut is a thinning out cut. And that is a cut where we remove a shoot at its origin. It doesn't cause branching. And this is the type of cut we want to use mostly on an older tree to uh, continue to get light into the interior of the tree. You can see right here is a fire blight canker infection. It's infected right here. We do not transfer fire blight on our pruners in the dormant season. It's not active. This is a bacterial disease and it has the capability of moving, reproducing very rapidly in, in fruit trees. So we will prune that out and it's best to get this out of the orchard or burn it, send it out with the trash. There's blight there, there's blight there. We're gonna cut down below the blight. So you can see there's no infection in the wood. We would have brown area in here if the blight was, had moved down the conductive system of the plant. As these trees get older, they tend to get bushier. And so here we're gonna cut this to make this a leader on the limb. I'm gonna leave that unheaded. And we're gonna thin this out a little bit, take these vertical ones off the, the limb because they'll just go straight up. And over here on the lateral limb, we will cut back to a spur. That's a cut to a lateral. Keep in mind that these trees produce their fruit on spurs, little short growths. There's a spur right there that has five flowers in it. So we can cut that back to the spur. That's considered a thinning out cut. And we'll shorten that one up. We basically need to thin this limb out a little bit. And Make sure we're leaving spurs on there for fruit production. So we're gonna take off anything that's going straight up on the limb. Now these are vigorous water sprouts. They keep the sunlight from getting into the interior of the tree. And we don't want these laterals on here to get too long either. We're gonna take anything off that's on the underside of the limb. It keeps the sunlight from uh, getting into the bottom. And we'll, this one's hanging down. This is a little weaker one. We've got a little bit of fire blight here. I'm gonna cut that out. This one is broken, so we'll take that out. And we wanna keep these limbs from getting too long in here and getting too thick. So we're gonna thin these out quite a bit. Uh, okay, root suckers are another thing that need to be pruned off of the trees. This is 
again, mauling seven rootstock, and one of its weak points is it throws a lot of these root suckers up. You can see all of these coming up right here. I pruned most of these off previously. Uh, these are sources for fire blight to get into the root system of the tree, so you need to keep those uh, pruned off. Uh, we've, I pruned them off in the dormant season here. They could be a little closer. Commercial growers will use herbicide sprays to kill these and knock them off the trees. Okay, these root suckers also provide cover for voles to get in and, and feed on your, your tree roots. So uh, it's good to keep these cut off. You know, a lot of the newer rootstocks are selected for uh, a number of characteristics, and one of them is uh, uh, not to produce a lot of suckers at the bases of the trees. We're up in the top of the tree, and we've got to select a leader up here. And I'm looking at this one as one that is directly uh, straight up from the base of the tree. This one right here, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got fire blight in the top of it, so it's got to come out of there. And this one has fire blight also, so we'll take this one out and cut out the competing leaders. And we'll leave a few small laterals up here. Now we've got a little bit too much confusion in this space right here. So I'm gonna try to thin it out a little bit. Every tree is different, so everyone, everyone's different. They never look like the book. So you've just kind of got to prune the way you think it. The tree should be pruned and, and visualize where that tree is gonna grow in the future to get the sort of structure you'd like. Uh, we get the best sunlight exposure in the top of the tree, so usually you have some of your best apples in the, in the top of the tree. This is a nice limb. We're gonna cut to this weaker lateral and probably take this one out of there just because there's a few too many limbs in this spot. So now we've got a leader on the tree, but this has to be the highest spot on the tree. So we're going to make a heading back cut on this one to get it below the leader. So now this dominates the tree and controls uh, some of the growth in the tree down below. We'll shorten that one up a little bit, and this is still a little thick right in here. Uh, you can always find another branch on the tree to prune off, but you just kind of got to decide on a, on a place to stop. And here's the leader on this limb. As the fruit pulls these limbs down, you have to go back on the limb and, and find another leader sometimes. This tree's in, in fairly good shape for an old tree, so we'll, we'll call it quits about there. Remember, you want to prune in the dormant season, uh, pruning in the fall is when that tree is beginning to develop its hardiness and it's not good to, to prune in the fall. Thanks, Dr. Strang, for that demonstration. For more information, please check out the link below. It leads you to our Apple Pruning publication from the Department of Horticulture at the University of Kentucky. We also have another video demonstrating how to prune a tall spindle tree in the trellis system. Be sure to check that one out as well.